Hi friends, how are you today? I hope everyone is doing well and that you have enjoyed your week and that you have enjoyed some of the nice weather that we've been having lately. Um, I have another story for you today and today we are going to talk about um, Queen Esther. And um, so if you guys have a crown, I'm going to wait a moment for you to go ahead and find a crown or you could just pretend like you're wearing one if you'd like to do that too as we talk about um, Esther becoming a queen today. And then guys, you can also pretend like you are being a king. So go ahead, go find your crown. I'll wait here for a moment. All right, you have your crowns on. I have my little crown princess thing here. Um, mine's more of a headband, but that's okay. So um, let's pretend like we are princesses or queens, ladies, and let's do a little princess wave. Are you ready? Let's wave like this. Good job. Now, boys, if you have your crowns on, I want you to sit up nice and tall and put your shoulders back and think really hard like you're trying to make a decision. Good. All right. Before we get started on our story lesson today, we're going to take a moment to pray and ask God to help us to listen. And we can listen with our crowns on. So let's sit up nice and tall. And we can bow our heads and close our eyes before we um, start finding our Bible story for today. Are you, you ready? Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the time that you have given us. And we pray and ask that you will help us to listen very well. And we ask that you will help us to know what it is that you want us to learn today. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Now, some of you might know what happened with Queen Esther, but some of you guys might not know how she became a queen. So we're going to start today's Bible lesson in Esther chapter 2. So I've opened up my Bible and can you find Esther? Yep, good job, right here in the top corner. Now what about chapter 2? Can you guys find that big number 2 that we're looking for? Can you spot it? Good, yes, it's right there. So I have some flannel graph pictures to show you guys while I tell this story. And I will also be reading from my Bible. All right, are you ready? King Aharis was famous, was a famous ruler. He had the biggest kingdom of all. He was rich. And he was famous. He had power to command armies. He lived in a beautiful palace with dozens of servants. But King Aharius was unhappy. He needed a new queen. The king's advisors had an idea. Let a search be made for all the beautiful young unmarried women in the land. Let these women be brought to the palace and the king can choose whoever pleases him as his new queen. King Aharius liked this idea. He sent out his servants to make a careful search of all the land for the most beautiful women. Many beautiful young women were brought to the palace to learn how to be a queen. They were given servants and whatever they wanted to make themselves beautiful. So, Women were being brought to King Aharius's palace and they were learning how to become a princess. Some of them may have known, but others probably didn't. And they were given whatever they needed that they thought to become a queen. So let's see what's going on. Esther was a young Jewish girl. Her parents died when she was very young. So Esther went to live with her older cousin, Mordecai. 
Mordecai adopted Esther and raised her as if he was her as if she was his very own daughter. As she grew up, Esther became more and more beautiful. Not only was she beautiful to look at on the outside, Esther was beautiful on the inside. Esther was caring and kind. She was obedient to her cousin. And most of all, she loved and worshiped the Lord. Mordecai took Esther to the palace to see if she would be chosen by the king to be the new queen. But he warned Esther to not tell anyone that she was a Jew. He was sure the king would not choose a Jewish woman to be the queen. The servants in the palace noticed Esther's kind and caring heart. They liked Esther more than all the other women who wanted to be queen. They could tell Esther was special. One day, it was Esther's turn. To meet the king. Esther ta walked tall and straight into the king's throne room. She smiled and bowed low before the king. King Aharius decided Esther was the most beautiful young woman that he had seen. In Esther 2 verse 17 it says the king loved Esther more than all the other women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashiti. How did King Aharius feel when he saw Esther? Yes, that's right. In Esther 2.17, it said the King Aharius loved Esther. And what did the king do to Esther? He set the royal crown on Esther's head. You are the one, declared the king. You shall be my queen. The search was over. King Aharius had chosen a Jewish woman to become the queen of Persia. Of course, he did not know that she was a Jew. No one knew except for Mordecai. King Aharis thought he was choosing the next queen, but really it was God who made Esther kind and beautiful. It was God who caused King Aharis to fall in love with Esther, and God was putting his perfect plan into motion. No one knew what the plan was, but God wanted Esther to be the queen. He would use her to protect the Jews all over the kingdom. One day, after Mordecai sat still outside the palace gates and did his job, he was near Esther and could send her messages. One day, while he was sitting at the gate waiting for news to come from the palace, Mordecai heard two men talking. These two men were palace guards. Mordecai listened to them. They sounded very unhappy. In fact, they sounded angry. Mordecai could not believe what he heard next. Let's kill the king, one of them said. Yes, we need to get rid of him, said the other man. God had put Mordecai at the gates just at the right time. He quickly sent a messenger to Queen Esther. Two guards are plotting to kill the king. You must warn the king, the message said. When King Aharis called for Queen Esther, she told the king what Mordecai had overheard. The two wicked guards were arrested and quickly punished for their crimes. Everything that happened was written down in the king's royal record book, including Mordecai's name. This, too, 
was part of God's plan. It was God's plan for Mordecai to overhear the guards. It was God's plan for Esther to be chosen queen to help save the king's life. We'll learn more about God's powerful plan in the weeks to come. But for now, I have a memory verse to share with you guys. Are you ready? Let's see. That one's kind of a big one. So at the top, it says, who is in charge? Who will sit on the throne? Who is in charge and who will sit on the throne? Romans 13, 1 says, there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that are that exist are appointed by God. Romans 13, 1. Let's say that one again. That one's a lot. Romans 13, 1. There is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Romans 13, 1. So, who is in charge? There's only one person that's really in charge, and that person is God. Yes, there's presidents and kings and queens and um, others who've been appointed, like prime ministers and um, even principals or teachers or governors. Uh, all of those people are appointed because God said that he wanted them to be in charge. So God knows everything that is going on. He knows and he controls everything that happens. And sometimes we don't understand why there might be some people who are placed in charge, but God knows and God has a plan. So who thought that he was powerful in our lesson today? Yeah, King of Harris, he thought he was the most powerful person. But who does power come from? That's right, power comes from God. So, only God gives power to leaders, and God decides who will be a king, queen, president, governor, or any other leader of our country or a state. There is no authority except from God just like our memory verse says, right? There is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So while we remember that, let's go ahead and pray and thank God for the leaders that he's put in place. You ready? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Lord, we thank you that you know everything that is going on. We thank you that you are the one who puts people in the place of power and leadership. And we pray, Lord, for our leaders and those who are in charge, Lord. And we ask that they will make right choices and decisions for the people that they govern or rule over, Lord. And we hope that they will look to you and might turn to you to ask for wisdom and how to lead the right way. In your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, we'll learn a little bit more about Queen Esther later on and the rest of what's going on in her story. There's a reason that God put her there. Until then, let's try working on Romans 13.1, and I'll see you guys later on. Bye.